Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilters Heaven in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode, number 81, is upping your piecing game. But before we get to that, some unfinished business from last week. I showed you how to take out a square you wanted to replace for whatever reason. Wrong fabric, wrong orientation, whatever. And I took the piece out and one of the comments I got was, you took it out, but you didn't put it back in. So I'm going to show you how to put that piece back in. If you look at the square that we had last week that I took the piece out, you first have to see where you go to put it back in. And if you look at this, you can see that this is where it was sewed in first. And then this piece was sewed to the two side longer pieces. So that's where I'm going to start. I have to take the pieces right sides together. So I take my right side piece and put it on right side to this piece. And I'm going to pin And I'm going to pin on this side. And now I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and sew this in. Okay, here we are at the machine. I need to just position my fabric at the quarter inch. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Right sides together. Put in a pin. Oops, dropped one. Put the pin in on the other side. And go ahead and sew that at quarter inch. Now, if I was doing this to put into a project, this was a leftover block, I would go ahead and press this. But in the interest of time, I am just going to go ahead and sew it. Now I have to sew this side. And you can see right here, because this is folded down this way, it makes it a little difficult to get in here. You can release this to make it easier to get in, but I think I'm going to be okay, so I'm not going to. foot down and I look good so I'm just going to go ahead and sew that in and then I go do the last side I have some threads to pull out, but it's in fine. Then I just do the last side. It's really easy. You just put it back in the exact way you took it out. Or I should say the exact way that it was in the first time. So that's it, back in. 
press, pull, pull my excess threads out, and you're ready to go. All right, that's it for here at the sewing machine. We're going to go back to the boards. One last thing before we get started. I got this bag delivered by a customer yesterday. It is full of scraps. I have no idea what to do with it. There's nothing that's big yardage. I recognize a lot of it from the shop. If you have any brilliant ideas for me, please drop me a comment. Thanks for your help in advance. Okay, let's get to upping your piecing game. I noticed a theme when I was watching videos this week. There were several on improving your piecing. Rob Appel had one on nesting your seams. Karen Brown had one on mastering your quarter inch seam allowance. The, um, what's her name? The Simple Quilter had three things that improved her piecing. And even Tracy from the Sewing Channel, while she didn't call hers improving your piecing, she said 20 things I don't do anymore. And all those 20 things made her piecing better. And it made me think, I did last week about compensating for issues. I should have done today's episode first of how to avoid getting to the position where you need to compensate for errors. Shouldn't say errors, for not perfectly accurate piecing. So I have always said that to get accurate piecing, it's three things you need. Accurate cutting, accurate pressing, and an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. Let's start with the cutting. There are tools and notions that can help you achieve all these three things. With the cutting, the biggest thing that I think is important, I shouldn't say biggest, one of the most important things is using a starch or starch alternative to firm up your fabric. And the simple quilter said, you know, it's a personal decision and a lot of people don't want to do it because it takes time. It's so worth every second. It's really, especially if you have skinny strips you're cutting to keep that fabric from moving, it's really helpful to use. The next thing is good, accurate rulers. Some rulers are just better than others. Um, so see what you like, what works for you. I love Alex Anderson's Quilter Select rulers. I love the Creative Grids rulers. Those are by all means not the only good rulers out there, but you do need to use consistent, accurate rulers. And there's all kinds of non-slip aids. I have in a previous episode shown many of them, but you can go to your local quilt shop. There's dots, there's rough it up tape. There's all kinds of different things that can help you have your rulers not move. But if you use Alex Anderson's Quilter Select, they just don't move and don't need any aids. Um, and also the other thing I wanna point out on cutting is use your rulers for measuring. Rulers are made for measuring. They have thin lines, thin tick marks on them to use. Don't use your cutting mat. The rulers are, the rulers, the lines are too fat. And if you consistently use your cutting mat to measure, you will not have as accurate cut strips. Let me show you. I've got two strips here and I'm lining them both up on a line on the on the mat and I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to cut two inch strips so I'm going to count one two oops my fabric moved a little bit
and lining up on my blue line here. And I'm going to cut, and now I'm going to cut this one. Now let's see how close they are. I should have this one on the bottom. So you can see. Look at how much bigger the blue is to the yellow. And why is that? Because of where the fabric was placed on the blue line. You can be to the edge on this side, you can be in the middle, you can be on the edge on this side, and then you have to consistently cut the same thing when you lay the ruler down and cut. Left edge, right edge, center. These are thick lines. You won't get the same accuracy as you will with a ruler. So that's it for the cutting. Let's move to the next step, pressing. Now there's lots of um, arguments in pressing and some people always use steam, some people never use steam. If you're using steam, you need to be very careful because it will distort your pieces if you push with your iron and push your fabric out of shape. That's one point that um, the simple quilter made, she talked about the difference between pressing, where you just lift the iron up and down, or ironing, where you're pushing it around. You need to be very careful if you're pushing around, because you don't want your fabric units to get distorted. So the things you do need is a good iron, and an, uh, an iron to be good doesn't have to be expensive. We have found good irons inexpensive. We found bad irons expensive. We found good irons expensive. We found bad irons inexpensive. You need to find one that works for you. The current one that I'm using, I got from Costco and I love it. Um, I already talked about technique, pressing versus um, ironing, pushing it around, that's important. For those of you who don't use steam, many of you like to use a mister bottle for water. Now, the thing about the using the steam, people say, besides the distortion issue, is that it will at some point spit all over your fabric. Well, the key to that is make sure that your iron is already preheated before you start to use a steam because when it starts to spit, it's usually because your iron isn't heated up. The other thing is, don't forget to use your self-cleaning function. Now my iron says, use it after every time you use your iron. Well, clearly they don't know quilters who use their irons all the time when they're sewing. So I do mine about once a month and I've not had a problem at all. Make sure your iron's heated up and use your self-cleaning function, and you're really okay to use steam when you want to use steam. Probably not on bias edges. There are other um, products. There's the flatter spray and the acorn pen. These two products help you get your pressing um, better. Um, see if you like them. I have not used the acorn pen. I've seen videos on it. Looks really good to me. I have an open bottle of flatter, so I do use that one to try to get um, my pressing um, to a better flatter accuracy. Um, last thing about pressing, steams, seams open or seams to one side. I've also talked about this before. Many people always press their seams open. Many people always press to one side. I think you're better off pressing to one side when it makes more sense and pressing open when it makes more sense. 
if it's just two seams coming together, I find it easier to get the points to meet or the intersections to meet better when I press to one side. If I've got eight things coming into one place, open keeps everything flatter. So I do both. I think it's a good way to go. Give me one second. We've got to switch out the boards. The last of my three points for accurate piecing is the accurate quarter inch seam allowance. And I would say to you, see Karen Brown's video. We'll have a link to that. Um, I can't really improve on all the issues that she covers in that video. The only thing that I would comment on on her video is one of the things is using tape to build up a ledge to butt your fabric up against to make sure that you stay straight and at the right quarter inch. If you have a front loading bobbin below your needle, that's fine. You don't have to change your needle plate very often and that can work for you. I change my needle plate all the time and people who have a top loading bobbin, um, you have to keep removing the tape and putting it back on which means you have to make sure that you put it back in the same place and keep it very accurate. That's the only technique that for me wouldn't work. What I like is my beautiful Bernina that has quarter inch foot, quarter inch lines, and I get accuracy without any needing of a ledge. But I encourage you to watch her video because there's a lot of good information in it. The last thing I want to talk about is that there's tools that help you. So what if you did your best quarter inch seam allowance, your best cutting with starched fabric, and your units or blocks don't come out perfectly? Um, there's tools to make sure that your block units are accurate and have that extra half inch quarter inch on all sides um, so that when you sew that block or unit into your quilt, it's the right size and meets the size piece next to it. If you've watched this channel at all, you know I'm a big Deb Tucker fan. And I want to um, show you what I think if you only had one, it would be the Tucker trimmer. And behind me here, I have an example of all the units that this one ruler covers. It's 11 sizes from an inch to six and a half. It does the half square triangles, quarter square triangles, and combo units. So while many people say, I don't wanna buy another ruler, this ruler does so much that to me, it's worth every penny. Last weekend, I took a day and a half off from the store and went to Michigan with my girlfriends. What does a quilter do when they're in another area? Look for quilt shops, of course. All three of us are sewers quilters. And so we made our own little shop hop, four shops in central Michigan, near the Kalamazoo area. In all those shops, none of them carried Deb Tucker rulers. I did see one square squared ruler in one shop. And all I can say is if you're in a desert of no Deb Tucker rulers, you need to go to her website or go to your quilt shop and say, carry the rulers. The distributor that I use is just south of there in Northern Ohio. I can't imagine that they can't get these rulers. But let me show you why you want this ruler instead of just squaring your um, blocks up with a regular um, Creative Grids ruler. And I do like the Creative Grids rulers. To me, it's always the right tool for the right job. So here I've got two quarter square triangle units. 
Now, if these were half square triangle units, I could just lay my diagonal line on here. I'm going to square up to three inches and cut, cut. And then you turn it around, put your lines on the three inches. I've got my diagonal line on my diagonal line. So this is not too bad, but the one thing I didn't mark was where the center was. There's no center mark on this ruler. You'd have to find where the center mark is for the three inches to get it onto here. If you have your Deb Tucker ruler, and I'm going to trim to three inches, I lay my ruler on it, and I not only have this diagonal line that I had on the Creative Grids ruler, but I also have this diagonal line, and there's the intersection. So the intersection there of the two diagonal lines lays on the intersection here. And then I turn it and do the same thing again. This should be in the center. My three inch line should be on the two edges. Place your ruler right. Okay. And now we know this is entirely accurate. This one looks like the center is slightly off here. Let me see if it is. That's pretty close. It's a fraction. It's tiny, tiny, tiny off. But if you're using this, you don't have the accuracy for this as you do here because of the extra lines made to do um, what you're trying to do, square up a, a, a hourglass quarter square triangle block. So this, the Deb Tucker rulers are by no means the only specialty rulers out there. You may like the block lock. They work, they're great. The issue with them is you need way more of them than you need of the Deb Tuckers. Um, there's other brands, if you like them and they're accurate, use them. I find these because they oversize and then you cut down, you take care of some of the issues if you aren't perfect on your quarter inch seam allowance, your cutting and your pressing. So hopefully you have found this of value. If so, please like, share and subscribe. And until next time, happy sewing.